So before I get into the word, I'd just like to ask a question. Would you like it if someone come into your house and brought a bunch of garbage and mess into your house? Would you uh, allow them to do it? Or would you feel good and say it's all right to do it? Well, God has a message today for all of us today uh, and that very thing because, you know, uh, throughout the week, <laughs> you know, the truth is the truth. And, and, it, and the Bible tells me it's the truth that will set you free. So the thing is that God blesses us. You know, earlier, it, it's just the thing that he blesses us with seven days. But six days we live a life a sin, practicing sin. And then on Sundays, we say, I'm going to church. Six days we live in practical sin. And then say, Sunday I'm going to church. And say that all the sin that I've lived in it's all well when I come through this door and God and no one else knows. But God has a message for us. You know, I'd like to make things just as plain and clear. It's not to be eloquent or nothing in, in anything. It's just to present the truth clearly. You know, uh, the truth of the matter, there's some here that have lived just like that this week, maybe last night, and say that I'm going to church on a Sunday. You know, it's the thing that we do, that we live a life of sin and say that I'm a Christian. And then we come to this door of this house, and we say it's all well, and we have a facade on, and we act as if it's our life is clean and we are raising our hands up and everything, and, but yet we haven't dealt with the sin that we lived in the prior week, in the prior six days. You know, a lot of times when you bring in the word, a lot of people don't like to hear the truth. But I don't mind telling you the truth. You know, I have to first tell you this, that I'm not preaching anything to you that has not first been applied to my life. I can't preach to you if I'm living a life like I'm preaching for you not to live. But the application and the preaching has to start here first. So as an encouragement, and I pray as a conviction, that as this word go forth today, that it will convict you and to turn you Away. Turn away completely. Because sin is the problem. Sin is the problem. You know, and I just want to be clear. You know, but the thing is that I let the word of God speak for itself. You know, we, the theme for today is I dare you. I dare you. Now I'm going to let you take time to meditate on that and, and put it together on what it means to say I dare what God is saying, I dare you. Well, you know, I ask you a question. I say, well, if someone comes to your house and bring a bunch of mess, first thing you're going to say, I dare you to bring this into my house. Yeah. I dare you to, to think of me in that kind of a way. I dare you to disrespect me in that kind of a way and my home. So the thing is that we're going to let the word of God speak about it, about what he says in that very order, is I dare you. So the scripture reading today, well, first I just want to share with you, you know, in Psalms chapter 69, verse 9, Jesus said, zeal for your house will consume me. That's in the Old Testament. But its fulfillment came in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, 
Or in John chapter 2, verse 17, when the money changers was outside of the, his father's house selling merchandise and dogs and cattle and everything and changing money and so forth. And when Jesus said it, he come and he made a whip of cords. And right immediately, he cracked the whip and turned the money, changed his table over, and hit the cattle and drove them out and said, my father's house is to not a house of merchandise, but a house of prayer. Jesus said, zeal for your house. As the great God and eternal God, he himself is making a statement to us all. In his humanity, Jesus is just sharing, sharing with us that, that our heart attitude should be too when we come. You know about, it's a place in, that God has said himself, that he speaks himself about it. The house, but not the house itself. He speaks about the conduct. Yes. See, your conduct and your life in coming to that house. See, you have to have a right motive and a right perspective. And your focus has to be right when you come to God's house. You have to examine and take a look at your life. See, knowing who God is. See, but the thing is, uh, I'll let him speak to you through his word. And the scripture text today is out of Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 15. And may we stand, please, for the reading of the word. You know, uh, yes, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 15. And the word of the Lord says this. Well, when we're there, say amen. amen. And the word of the Lord says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words that say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, or the widow, or do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your forefathers forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Bob and follow other gods you have not known and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say we are safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shallow, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave you and your forefathers. I will thrust you from my presence just as I did all your brothers, the people of Ephraim. But you know, there's a, my wife, I want to, because another translation, I want you to hear this in verse 10, right? And to pay attention to what it says. And then dare to come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, by the discharge of this religious formality, we are set free. Only to go on with this wickedness and these abominations. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
we notice in that translation that God said in dare. You know, the theme, I, you know, I didn't ever know that that translation when he gave me this theme, I dare you. I was just in my restroom and it just come to me, I dare you. You know, and God saying, I, and dare to come and stand before me and say we are, in some translations say, delivered. That word delivered in the Old Testament is equivalent to the very word in the New Testament meaning salvation. Or I've been saved. Oh, I'm safe, you know, and to do these things. But God says, and then after living six days out there, practically in sin, daily, without a thought, without a conviction, and then come Sunday, you come to my house and stand before me and say I'm delivered to do all these things. And in some translations here, abominable things. Yeah. And say, I'm delivered to do it. You know, God says, I dare you. I dare you. You know, I know the Spirit can speak to many here, but I know one thing. That there's some. There could be some. And I pray that it's not, but I know there's someone. It could be. That's been living this type of life and say that I'm a Christian. You know, we come not only by that very token that what we, we live a life like that out there. Six days and come into this house. And there's Pastor Tony. And he preached to you that a life is clean. And he come to you and he, through love and he try to guide you away from sin. But yet you get angry at him and say he's wrong. But God said, you come and you stand before me. You don't listen to my shepherd. Your brothers and sisters, you come with issues and things of anger, causing division and everything. You know, because of the way that you live out there, yet you say I'm a Christian when you only come in this house on a Sunday. You know, I just tell the truth because the God's word declares it. It's plain. See, he said, because you have lived, he says, see what I did to my house in Shiloh, you know, that took place in AD 70 when God destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. You know, because they trusted in the house and not the master of the house. Uh, right. See, they, they dishonored the master of the house. They took it and they used it for other things. See, God had brought them too. I have to share this, that he had brought them out of Egypt, yes. symbolic to the world. See, he had parted the Red Sea. He did everything for them. And yet, they, Moses said he come cloud by day, fire by night. But the thing is, when that word says delivered, and we're saved, in other words, to continue to live a life of sin. And we know who we are. But remember, God says here, he says, I see. I have seen it. I see it daily. Yet, when you do, Brother Gary is not there to see it. Pastor Tony is not there to see it. None of your other brothers and sisters is there to see it. But God said, I see it. See? And God sees the motives and everything of the heart. So the conduct in your life that's being supposed to be ordered or right, when you're walking and you cross the street and you see this door and you say that you're coming, you're saying you come here and to, to he said all that enter here to worship the Lord. When you cross the street, something should hit you. The Holy Spirit, if you got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you of sin. He's not going to allow you to live in sin. So if you're living in it and practically living in it, Day by day, without a conviction and no concern, uh, might have to put things in question about your salvation. I'm, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Because if you can live in sin and there's no conviction, because the Word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit convicts the child of God and He don't allow you to live in sin. But the thing is that God is making a statement here to the very factor of the attitude and your conduct 
of your life before you come here during the week. Worshiping God is in your job. Worshiping God is how you treat your wife. Worshiping God is how you treat your husband, how you treat your children. So the thing is that, and then when we go and we live a life, my pastor, he preaches, and we all know it, that you don't go live a life, a life and not married, and you're saying, I'm bouncing with Jody. Or you're saying, I'm over here with Jane, and you're not married to her. Or you ease around St. Julian around there, and they're along at 2 o'clock in the morning, Pastor Tony might have to go to L.A. Mission, and then he come fast there, and he asks you, what you doing out here? And you say, oh, I'm over here a witness to somebody. <laughs> but you know that you're living a life of sin, but yet you come to this door. And at the door, there's no conviction, and then you come and you raise your hands all up in the air, and everybody around, it, it, you know, you're, you're like it's clean. But the thing is that you need to understand that you're casting a high hand at God when you're saying that he saved you and to live a life continually in sin. You know, it's the very thing that he says is his house. He said to Jeremiah to stand at that gate. But I'm going to stand here and, and declare to you that if God said, I dare you, I dare you to disrespect and dishonor me in that order. I dare you to represent me in a way of unrighteousness. I dare you to say that you're called by my name and living a life in the way that you're doing. God said, I dare you to come and stand before me after profaning my holy name. And not a heart of repentance because Jesus preached repentance. John the Baptist preached it. And all through, after salvation, we must repent. Turn. That's why God said reform your ways and your actions and your doing. Reform. To a life of cleanliness, a life of change. A life apart from sin. When you come into this house, God says it. I feel this as I look through. This is the only place that I find that God speaks himself about your attitude and your conduct of before coming into his house. He said he sees it. He said, see what he did to that temple because of the wickedness of his people. Now I'm going to share with you that when you live like that and you come in here, you know that here's the thing that you stop the power of God, you stop the growth of the body because as he told Mo Moses, he said, Moses, there's sin in the camp. This is when Achan had hid the gold on his, his tent. But God saw it. And God sees. He says he sees. And God opened the ground up and swallowed it to show you what he thinks about it. When it's sin in the camp, when you're allowing sin and you come and you mix among your brothers and sisters that trying to walk a path of righteousness, and there you sit knowing that you have sin in your life, knowing that you have an attitude in the wrong way towards your pastor, knowing that you got anger and division and jealousy and envy and everything against your brothers and sisters. And God tells Pastor Tony, he said, there's sin in the camp. Yes, he does. And Pastor Tony deals with that. And people get angry at him for the discipline. But I want you to hear what he, that he said to Jeremiah. And he, when he spoke to Jeremiah, he said, Here, not Jeremiah, not Pastor Tony, not Brother Gary. He said, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, not thus says man, thus says the Lord concerning your conduct and your attitude and your actions coming into this place. Your life, your life, is what it speaks out there. Because individually, he's a personal God. He's a personal Savior. So when I stand upon my own out there as I go, I represent him in a miscommunication. See, so the thing is that he says about his house when you come, 
Keep your life clean. I thank God for my pastor. I think I do. I thank God for blessing me and blessing me with him in my life. Because he'll ask a question. Gary, is everything all right? How's your life? Pastor Tony asked. See, because he knows. But he only wants this congregation to be free. Yeah. That the power of God can flow. Yeah. That the love and the light of God can go out and change lives. This is God's purpose. And it's God's spirit in him that speaks it. It's God's spirit in me that's speaking it. It's God's spirit through his word that's bringing it. It's not anybody else. So your attitude. Christ died. He, God didn't deliver you to live in sin. He delivered you out of it. Though we sin, and sin will forever be in this flesh, but we don't have to practice sin daily. We don't have to practice, make a life of practice of sin. We know the right thing, and we love the Lord. And if we want to be an encouragement and example to other believers and people, we'll keep our life. For their sake. Not just for my sake. For their sake. And for the Lord's sake. We'll keep our life clean. That this church. That this family. Can grow together. In harmony and in peace. That we can be at ease upon Pastor Tony. That he can have a joy. That his job is not in vain. That what he's work is not in vain. Because we're submitting. Not so much through Pastor Tony, but Pastor Tony wants us to submit to the Word of God and who Christ is. That's, that's, right. that's what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. See? So the thing is that, that we cast a high hand at God. We get mad when somebody tells us the truth. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you the truth. He can get mad at me all morning because I tell the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth about God's Word. I'm not going to tell you Gary Carr's opinion or nothing of that sort. I'm just going to say, thus says the Lord, and this is what it does for me. Yeah, and if your life is out of order, I'm just going to speak the word. I, I, and I pray that you'll turn it and it'll turn you. That's all I can. I, that's my prayer today that as you heard, that as we, this door on a Sunday, or either it's open seven days a week. <laughs> order your conduct in your life right before you step in this door. Because the master of the house is holy. The master of the house is righteous. See? That's the thing. So we keep our life all right. And we understand that we have a pastor that loves us and we want to make it just as easy, his work, joyful, that he don't like to do the discipline, but he will. But he don't like it. But the thing is that he don't have to do that. That it be a joy to him. That we come alongside him. That we listen to him. That we submit to him with the surety that God is leading him to, to lead and to guide us. And all of this God is saying it. He's saying all this right here in his word. Your conduct and your order of your life out there. And also your conduct and your order of your life inside this house. So that's the thing that we need to take heed to. You know, and just to say, share with you what the Apostle Paul said, let's, we can, you don't have to turn to the book of Romans chapter 6, but I encourage you to, chapter 6 starting at verse 1 and 2, you know, and it's clear, it's plain. God said, see, because of the wickedness of my people, and people that lives in sin, you say that I've been delivered to do things and to live a life of sin. But here's what the word of God says through the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, verse 1. It says, what shall we, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? You hear it? Yes. Yes. Amen. What shall we say then to this? 
Shall we go on sinning? That grace, see, that's casting our hand at God. I'm going to live my life like I want. Even to my eyes, because I've been saved. Shall we go on sinning? No. Habitually sinning. That grace may abound. May it never be. You know, it's because the truth is what Jesus did. I just want to put all of your hearts and minds upon that very principle. What Christ did for you. He died. Sin. For sin. Because of sin. To deliver you from a life of sin. The power of sin. Why would we cast a high hand back at God to live in it any longer? Whether it's out there practically doing it out there or coming into this house being disobedient to the authority that God has set or hurting your brothers and sisters with your division and your anger and your whatever it's going to be. You're only bringing a reproach against Christ. You know, so the thing is that we need to understand. And that's why also in this same chapter, we can turn to chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Saying Paul is writing to believers that we need to understand that this is how that God has set the standard to order our lives. See, that we bring honor and glory to God through our lives. And in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, he said, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act to worship or your reasonable service, some translations say. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, and it says when you do that, it says then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, that word transform, the word, we, it derives from the word metamorphosis. And we take that from a caterpillar that goes into a cocoon. You know, I'm sure that that little caterpillar squirms in there trying to, along the way. You know, a lot of us squirm and want to do our thing alone when God's power is in our lives to change our lives. But when that caterpillar relaxed in that cocoon, and in due time it came out as a beautiful butterfly. So you see, it wasn't the same. It was something different. So if you, it's changed. So if you are continually being the same yes. and living the same, yes. the Bible tells us that you need to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. That's right. It's clear. The truth. It, it, God's word is just plain. It, it, to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Uh, habitually, I, well, when, before I was saved, I lived in a, a life head over heels of sin, right? Without a thought. And if I say that I've been saved and this is the same kind of way that I am and condition I'm in, we need to examine ourselves. We need to examine ourselves. You know, I just tell the truth because the truth is what sets people free and the Holy Spirit moves and convicts people by the truth. Yes. You know, so the thing is, to make it plain and clear. You examine your life. Only you know. God knows, but only you know. So you examine your life if you're living practically, daily, habitually, without a thought. God said, and then come before me and say, I'm saved or delivered to do all these detestable things that I do during the week. So according to the word of God that we hear, we hear what God says and how he feels about your attitude and your conduct throughout the week and then coming into this house. You dishonor God, you dishonor your brothers and sisters. Most of all, you dishonor the shepherd that God has set to lead this flock in the right way. I pray that the, this word, I pray for sure, and that this word will turn hearts and change minds and change thinkings and 
and, and give you an understanding of what God thinks and feels about when you live like you live and then come before him and stand as if it's nothing and all is well. So through it all, I just pray that the Lord would add a blessing and a cause a turning or a change and a different view through love that what he's done that we can all come together and be one and love our pastor. Love and submit upon our pastor to make it easy that the power of God can go out and this church can flourish, that we can flourish together. I pray that the Holy Spirit is convicted. I pray that he has. I pray that he has. This day. You know, but you know, there's a very important the most important thing. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, today, is, I just say this too, and a recommitment too. Uh, you can come and recommit your life to Christ. You can turn from those things and recommit your life to Christ today. If anyone, I know the Spirit has to touch the hearts. If anyone has been touched by the Holy Spirit today, to recommit their lives. You know who you are. That says I'm a Christian and living your life in habitual sin in the way that you're doing in a place that you shouldn't be and bringing reproach to God, you need to get up here. 